so greetings to all of you today we are going to cover artificial intelligence in justice delivery by me ishan aroda so today we are going to cover it in the form of special uh, question and answer writing format so integrating artificial intelligence is the need of the hour to make justice delivery in indian courts more efficient comment so now there are a few things which are concerned initially you should be able to capture the context of the question okay so artificial intelligence then you have to link it with the indian courts and the linking term here is efficiency now whenever there is a question asked you have to understand that what could be the reason see because there are lot of inefficiencies that is why this question is asked agar inefficiency nahi hoga to why would the examiner ask ki this can reduce the inefficiency so the first thing you must understand in the context is that yes there are inefficiencies and we need to improve them the tool which the examiner is asking is artificial intelligence so you will use artificial intelligence now the next part will be how to integrate it in the courts now whenever you bring in a new technology or new reform there are always bound to be some benefits and some challenges keeping all of these things in mind we will then give a way forward so in the introduction part you can start with either of the three see what are the basic inefficiencies either they are the pendency of court cases or you can also showcase the vacancies or another thing which can be shown is under trials so i am going to give you the data for all of these things pendency is basically there are three crore cases pending 60000 in the supreme court 4 to 5 lakhs in the high courts and then overall if you combine the lower judiciary as well there are about 3 crore cases pending 3 crore cases are pending see 35% of seats are vacant in the lower judiciary now if a country has decided it will work with 100 judges and 65 are only available will the system be efficient agar aap ye decide karte hain ki 100 judges are going to be there and you have only 65 to kya aapka system efficient hoga if you show that there is lot of vacancy there is lack of manpower lack of training then also the person will get an idea that the person has understood now under trials 67% of the prisoners are under trial every every two out of three prisoners are under trial so this means that the system is not efficient and prisons are filled with people jinke khilaf case chal raha hai case is still going on and they are inside the prison because the system is not able to hear the cases in the fast manner or efficient manner so now how do you bring it with ai so now artificial intelligence and machine learning have always increased the efficiency of any system we are aware of this now what happens in this is that initially you have to teach this system so how can we integrate it into the judicial system one first you will have to identify where this can be used identify the areas where artificial intelligence can be used then basically what will happen you will teach it how you have to work in that area then monitoring will be done second case is monitoring continuous monitoring so that there is no bias there can be no bias when we are see if you are teaching this system which is artificial intelligence so we have to design a code and we have to keep such supervision that the code itself is not biased 
or is not being unobjective or subjective in giving the appeals. Okay. Over the time this machine will learn from experience. So once you have made it identify this is the area where you can work. You do not have to work in a subjective or this manner that people are denied justice. Then <coughs> it will learn through experience itself. So this is how AI can be used in this justice delivery. Now if this is brought definitely the system will be more efficient. So moving into the next part, see what will happen, A repetitive task will be taken over by the AI. Now, if the artificial is doing the repetitive tasks and those which require less mental skill. Now there are three types of people who are there, judges, lawyers and those against whom the cases are filed. Okay. So basically whatever the situation is, all of these will benefit because system will be more efficient. Now what, why will it be more efficient? Because now more time will be available for them to take care in the interpretation of the law. They can work on more intellectual skills like interpretation of the law. Then how to structure the debate, structure their argument. Now the manual work repetitive task can be done by AI. What will be the arguments, arguments against? Now those who are the, those who are designing these complex uh, AI tools, they will have a lot of discretion or power. So this will give them a lot of power because they are designing these artificial intelligence platforms which will be used in the courts. So they can design it with the help of loopholes or they may find out the loopholes initially which can bring the system into threat. Also there are cases of data issues, data privacy, ethical issues. So basically also jobs will be going in such a situation. Okay. So all of these things have to be taken into consideration. Data privacy protection, all of these things you understand. So if this data is in the AI tool and there is a company in the back end which has access to this data. Now otherwise in the normal system what happens is there is court has files which are kept in secrecy. Nobody pen, can comment on them. The information cannot be leaked. So all of these situations will come into the picture. So now way forward will be that one there should be proper legislation to protect these data thefts etc. Whatever the other issues are coming. Also supervision. Supervision and regulatory mechanism. Regulatory mechanisms. Those who are designing these AI tools they should have proper supervision and regulatory control established by the government. Then we have to see in the long term, in the long run, definitely it will increase the efficiency. So we can conclude our answer by saying that yes, definitely it will increase the efficiency in the long run. But we should also take care of these things, few things that the rights of the people are data rights, privacy rights are not abrogated. Okay. People are careful as to what information is going out and there has to be proper supervision, regulatory procedures. The tools should not be having certain biases. There should be proper uh, mechanism to see that the machine tools are learning properly. These things have to be taken care of. Now international best practices, 
See, this artificial intelligence has already been used in Canada and USA. Judges are using AI to give verdicts for bail and parole. Whether a person should be granted bail, parole. See, the legal facts of the case can be easily identified with the help of AI. How the processing has to be done? That definitely has to be done by the judge and the interpretation has to be done by the lawyer. So, it is only a helping hand. It cannot be shift the judge. You cannot throw out the judge and put in AI because that is not uh, possible. Things of higher intellectual capacity have to be done by the humans. So, this is some of the best practices. Now, looking at this, the Supreme Court has also launched SuPACE, Supreme Court Portal for Assistance in Court Efficiency. This portal initially identifies the areas, it identifies in which areas it can help out the Supreme Court. Now this is some extra information for you, the answer ended in the previous part. So while you are writing the answer, in the benefits part only you can write the international best practice. That in Canada and USA they are already using this. Okay? It identifies the areas where it can work the person who is presiding he can identify okay we will use it in this 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 so this you can say that the training process starts then training of the tool ai tool then with time it is taught these are the things if a similar case comes up it uses the experience now it learns from experience And adoption of this has made the Indian judiciary one of the most forward looking or technologically enabled Supreme Courts, which is the much needed, uh, much need of the hour. This is a step much needed at this point of time because I have given you the numbers already. So, with this answer writing session and analysis, we end this class. Thank you so much.